Hey there, hey there YouTube, this is WakeAngel2001, and this is my buddy. Elias for sure. <laughs> and um, and we're and we're doing a bit of an unboxing review today. So um, let's fill in some backstory. Okay, so as you can see, this is the Megazord from season one of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And on season two, they kind of got destroyed or whatever, but Alpha and Zord are able to salvage this Megazord in order to create the new Zords. Which means, of course, that they ran out of Zoo Ranger Sentai footage and had to move on to the next series to edit. Come on. <laughs> Anyways, the Thunder Megazord. Legacy Edition. Okay, so for we... us big kids. <laughs> all right, so we are going to unbox this figure and review it for you all. Okay, so the Thunder Megazord comes in this big ass box. Uh, how big is it? There's the regular Megazord box, so, uh, yeah, it's like, it is literally twice the box. See, if, if I may, if I may, originally, when these twice came out in 1996, it was two, it was two, remember, you had to get, you had to buy the, the Red Dragon Thunder Zord separate from the other four Zords, but in this one, they put all five together. Spoken like someone who has actually been collecting the toys since they were a thing in the 90s. All right, so uh, let's just take a quick look at the back of it so that uh, we can get into this. All right, so the back shows you what the fully assembled Megazord would look like along with the individual Zords, plus the combination with the White Tiger Zord. Uh, we'll get to that later. All right, so now let's get this guy out of the box. So when you pull it out of the box, everything is covered by this cardboard and a rather extensive instruction sheet, all things considered. But then, ta -da! It's so beautiful. <laughs> yes. So uh, the Dragon Zord is already pretty much in its humanoid form. Uh, what did they call that? The, the Red um, Dragon Thunder Zord. No, no. Like, um, what was it when it turned into a humanoid robot? They called it like Battle Mode or something. Whatever. The um, Warrior Mode. Yeah. Then you got then you got all the other dudes and the weapons and all that. All right. Let's get all this out of the shrink wrap and um, and see what they're like. And so we begin with the Unicorn and Griffin Zords. They are trying so hard not to look like a pair of a pair of uh, long necked heads sticking out of a, a giant pair of feet. Um, the Unicorn has articulation. You can fold its head like this, uh, which of course is mostly to accommodate transformation into leg mode, of course. And the Griffin has similar neck articulation, although it does not go as far forward as the unicorns. Um, it could be kind of hard for a griffin to fly if it can't put its head forward. You know what? I'm calling... I'm... Screw the griffin and unicorn. I'm calling these Nessie and Bessie because they kind of look like the Loch Ness monster. Yeah, nothing, nothing too spectacular or interesting about them except for, of course, the intricate detailing. Um, the Zords designs themselves, notwithstanding, they did lovingly pick out every single detail that you would be familiar with in the show uh, with this lovely gold and, and chrome. And it looks so nice, all this intricate paint deal. Nothing on the bottom, of course, but but just about on every other surface, it just looks really good. Really, really good. So, like, I always, I always had a problem with, with this part of the show because, well, like, the, the Tiger Zord and the, um, and the Triceratops, they looked like something when they were not part of the combination. These guys, these guys are barely playing any lip service to the fact that they're supposed to be some kind of animal and they're just, they just, their legs with heads sticking out of them. I really don't know what else to say. Oh, and the so-called unicorn has implied wings painted on the side. And it's kind of lacking a horn, unless you count that little gun sticking out of its head. So either that's the tiniest unicorn horn ever, or this is actually supposed to be a pegasus. Or maybe an alicorn. Yeah, make it... Yeah, this is the alicorn megazord. Because Eli's not here to stop me from being a brony. Up next is the lion megazord. Uh, not Megazord, Zord. Mega is a combination. Which, 
looks um very cool with all the chrome but um well this is kind of more like the lion turtle megazord from A from avatar the last airbender because come on that's a turtle this looks like a giant turtle that just so happens to have a lion's face um a giant lion's a lion's face in the front and a helmet in the back and as you can see he comes apart very easily because these are the shoulder pads and the arms they peg in with these two tiny tiny little peg holes like they're so tiny i can't believe they actually hold anything i mean there's a clip here that clearly like like this this is a button that pushes in but geez it's so small and it doesn't help that this is all die cast so if you pick if you pick the head up from the wrong part the legs can just fall right out but um again all the paint detailing from the show is captured and there is a little bit of articulation that the head can look up yeah it looks kind of cute like meow. he's like he's trying to get attention so yeah like this is the chubbiest little lion ever but if you think about it as the lion turtle from Avatar The Last Airbender, that suddenly makes it better. And then we get my favorite of the four little zords, the Firebird. This is the one that actually looks like a real genuine improvement over the pterodactyl zord. Like, it actually looks like a bird for one thing. I mean, it doesn't have any kind of legs or undercarriage. In fact, pretty much this entire bottom is unpainted, but everything else on it's just great like look at look at the gold detailing on the back you see the pink streaks because it's still the pink ranger zord um and it has some articulation like you can pull, you can rear the head up and the wings they are hinged in two spots they're in they are hinged here and they are hinged here so you can actually like hey look at that you can actually like put it into a pose that it looks like it's flapping its wings. That is actually really beautiful. It's quite spectacular. Oh yeah, this one really gets my approval. I think that of the four smaller ones, it's probably the best. Okay, now let's move on to the big guy. And here is probably the cream of the crop for the set. The Red Dragon Mega um, Zord. It is actually really cool. I can see why this would have been a separate purchase back in the day because this is almost a, a not good enough to be a standalone toy all on its own and of course all the detailing is great but but for once there's something other than detailing to talk about because if you just let me get around here this guy is actually an articulated action figure like really so let's uh, let's get that in there. Okay, so you have a swiveling head, which is always good, and you have shoulder movement. But not only do they move up, they also move out. And he has an elbow. And before you think that that looks kind of weird, he has shoulder swivels. Well, bicep swivels. So so he kind of has curling because there's no wrist, but he can actually like you know look like he's doing stuff <laughs> like it's rare to get a lot of articulation out of a sentai mech but this is actually really good the legs um they're weird <laughs> uh there are the dragon's neck and tail so they're like there's a joint here joint here there's like joints joints you got like a thigh swivel but everything here is just so wiggly and wobbly <laughs> They, they don't want to bend a lot, but they also don't want to be straight, so he's actually really awkward and weird to stand. Oh, and look, look. Finger articulation. Each hand features two knuckles that move separately. So the purpose of that is to put in his staff accessory, which you just kind of stick there, and then you close the fingers around it so that he gets a good grip. There we go. Yeah. So, um... So you can actually, like, pose up your, your Red Dragon Megazord. Um, and of course, the thing with the Red Dragon Megazord is that he also transforms. Um, 
It's a bit complex and parts formery, but hey, this isn't one of Hasbro's Transformers. It's a Super Sentai mech. So uh, the fact that it, it actually looks really good in this mode uh, and transforms at all is actually quite impressive. So let's, uh, let's get this guy transformed into his dragon mode. And here is the red dragon zord as it's uh, in its dragon mode. And yeah, it is pretty big. It's like well over a foot long. And like, you can see, like you actually extend out the legs to reveal those black bits in between. And it is just bloody huge. And well, it looks really cool. I mean, it's, it still has a, a pretty wide range, like all those joints, like you can actually turn its neck and waggle its tail and do that and that. And um, the mouth opens and closes. Breathe fire, don't breathe fire. Um, get the, the legs, have articulation. Although on this one leg, the joint is so tight that I often overpower the mushroom pegs. So yeah, like, like this moves. Like, it, the illusion's kind of broken up when you look at it this way. But uh, you keep those moved there, and then, then yeah, then that works better. <laughs> um, yeah. But you're kind of pretending that those attach there because they actually don't. <laughs> it's a it's a robot dragon that makes you use your imagination. Something to be said about dragons and imagination. I just don't like how this panel on the one side doesn't really peg in. It's just sort of supported by the friction of its own hinges. So yeah, that, that's going to fall out if you mess around with the toy too much. But overall, the red dragon is, pro is, a, is a proper accomplishment all by itself. And um, I'm actually glad they weren't tempted to actually make this a separate purchase, uh, like apparently it was back in the day. So with all the individual Zords looked at, let's combine! So here in all of its glory is the Thunder Megazord. And I gotta say, I have mixed feelings. Yeah, Eli is not here to protect it with his fanboyism, so I'm gonna have to be honest with the uh, genuine faults that this figure kind of has. I mean, I, I don't know if uh, if you can look past this, but I don't know. There's like, okay, here's the thing: this thing likes to pretend it's a big tough bot, but it really isn't in a lot of places. Like, like let's let's uh. Let's get in here, like, okay, you see, you see his legs? Those look big and strong, right? They're just flaps. It's a little panel in front of the skinny little dragon legs underneath. And like, it's a wobbly panel at that. Let's get your arm out of the way. It's a wobbly panel. Doesn't, doesn't really, doesn't snap in. It has a slot here that looks like it should be snapping into something. Then I'm there for it to snap into. Singles for the skirt. You know, bird's wings are hugging around it. They're not clipping into anything. They're just kind of held there. Um, this chain, like, it's a really nice chain. It's actual metal. You like connect it here and then wrap it around. Like, if there was a little peg or something here so that it could hold on here, but you know, none holding it there either. Not only that, but look at that. It's a little bit wobbly because of the way the dragon's legs are engineered. Hi. See, look, the tail, the, the chain came off during, between takes and I can't wrap it back up again. Every time I try to wrap it up, it just falls off. I really, this thing just, it looks nice from the front at least, but doesn't hold together. I mean, the one thing you really want from a Sentai mech is something that holds together and is totally solid. And this kind of doesn't deliver that. Um, 
course, you have uh, opening hands. You can put the sword in there. Really, really nice sword. Look at that. Look at how beautiful this sword is. Real nice sword. But just to sell in the whole looseness idea, when you put the sword in the hand, it just, like, look at that. That is the most ginger loose way to hold the sword. And again, there's no peg or clip or anything to make the connection more solid. It just kind of rests in there. And that that's the whole thing about this toy. Everything is kind of resting on itself. Like, look, this moves a little. Like, the arms actually get pretty good movement thanks to the fact that they're part of, like, you know, you got outward arm movement. Although, look at how easy it is to pop them off. This guy, he has no solid clips or pegs or anything. Everything just kind of comes off. I can't do this on camera. Um, I do respect how, um, like, the head is, is this helmet and the mouth guard lines up perfectly, which probably would be a little more convincing if I had it in frame at the time. So, yeah, like, you can actually see the red dragon sword's face. Like, yeah, that, that works. And you even pull it up a bit to give it a little more of a neck so that the head can still swivel. That's awesome. But, uh, you know, the, like this thing does a really good job of looking there and pretending it, like it's a good toy. But the truth is, like, it's just a poorly snapped together, wobbly mess of a figure. Like, this costs 200 bucks? I mean, look at it. Look at that. That's not the way that a Sentai Mech should be. Like, wow. I am actually shocked at how poorly it holds together. He does have an alternate weapon. You can take the sword out. The sword is actually the only thing that clips solidly. It has a little peg that lets it snap into the scabbard so it won't slip out by accident. Too bad they couldn't actually do that for any of the actual robot. So this is the weapon that the that the red dragon zord used on its own. And with the tail from the firebird zord in its hand, it becomes this giant staff spear thing. It's kind of cool. Um... If his arms still had the articulation that the Dragon Zord's arms had, that would actually be pretty cool and impressive. Here he just kind of stands with it. Like, like you gave him moving fingers, but you couldn't find a way to keep the elbow. I mean, I guess you have a little bit of an elbow just from the wiggle room afforded by, by the, by the uh, Dragon Zord's hand being in there. But, you know, the Dragon Zord's hand is in there. So when you bend it farther than this, you, you have the straight hand with no wrist articulation. Like, and that's all you get. This tiny little elbow bend. Plus, like, you can see it's it's like a guy is wearing a sleeve. <laughs> this is this is a dude wearing a suit that's way too big for him. I I wish I could like this better, but frankly, it's not that good a toy. It really isn't. I mean, the one thing, the one thing I would, I expect out of a Sentai mech is for it to solidly hold together and stand. That's what you sacrifice articulation for. And this doesn't do that. All right. However, this is not the end of uh, what this guy can do. So let's put it together into some of its alternate modes. And for that, we got bits. We got bits for that. Oh, but before I cut off the camera, I feel like... Uh, see what I said about nothing on this thing pegging right? Alright, get, get, get your weapons out of there before you embarrass yourself further. Okay, so... Yeah. One thing is that... It is bigger and a lot more impressive in stature than the original Megazord, so... 
you know, we got that going for us. Hey, while I was dismantling it for the next mode, I realized I kind of missed something. Um, the big old mech, he does have wrist swivels. So I guess since he has wrist swivels, that really would help with posing with the sword and the uh, spear. So good on it for having a wrist swivel articulation, because that's actually really good. Uh, that's another thing you don't often see in mechs, uh, Sentai mechs. Um, However, that doesn't really change the fact that the arms are very weakly pegged in at the shoulders and are constantly wanting to pop off every time you try to pose the stupid thing. So, yeah, good, good on you for having a point of articulation that I didn't expect, but uh, you still don't hold together very well. And here is the Thunder Megazord attack mode. Oh, oh. Yeah. That's the extendo neck for Megazord mode. And it's basically just a chariot made out of the other four robots that the dragon zord stands in the middle of. Uh, well, one thing I can say, it kind of pegs together better than the big zord does. I mean, it's on this face and I take it back. This thing is basically just something that he stands on. Okay, the, the base, like, yeah, no. I mean, everything's kind of on there. You can't exactly flip it upside down, but it stands. It That's all it's for. It stands there. Like, this is absolutely... I understand this is a toy for adult collectors. It's not really meant to be played with by kids. But since when was it's for adult collectors passed as an excuse to make something floppy and fragile? I mean... You'd think that you'd want a higher standard of, of uh, awesomeness. Like, look at this. His ankle keeps on collapsing and he falls, and that's nothing but his own weight doing that. I... I can't... I want to like this more, but I can't. It just keeps on disappointing me at every turn it can think of. Like, uh, like floppy leg joints don't let this guy stand. And weak pegs that don't hold together. I mean, uh, I mean, the paint job, the die cast, the chrome detailing, all that is beautiful and really nice, but... What's the point if nothing holds together? The sole purpose of this thing is to create a cool display, but it can't even do that because it won't stay together. I mean, am, am I just being an idiot here? Is this how Sentai toys have always been and I'm just the idiot that doesn't know how to play with them? Like, I, I can't, I mean, I'm a pretty veteran toy collector. I collect a lot of toys. It's true, Power Rangers has never been my thing before, but what is up with this? Well, okay, there is one more thing that it can do. The combination with the White Tiger Zord. So let's do that and see if we can salvage this thing. If that one mode makes up for the weakness of the other two. So there's the full combination with the White Tiger Zord. It's impressive in stature, I'll give it that. Of course, the thing is, the articulation's kind of sacrificed. One thing that made the... One thing that made the White Tiger Zord pretty cool was that, uh... You know, it had elbow joints, so... You know, those are still preserved. And it's preserved on this arm, too. Of course, that in... That... That, like... I don't know what you would call this. Is it like a buckler shield? Is it, like, like, you know, that weapon's kind of big and impractical, and it does not hold together very well at all. Like, it really doesn't. It just, it wants to, it's, it's just floppy wings, and it wants to come right out of his hand. Despite the heroic effort of his fingers to hold on to it, the fact that you're relying on the friction of these finger joints to keep it in place really kind of makes it impractical. So, you know, the weapon has showcased itself, so let's get the weapon out of the way. And <laughs> his mask keeps on coming down to cover his eyes. Um, like, he has elbows, okay. Uh, but 
Now his arms have no outward movement. <laughs> um, still as that. I mean, you don't get these mechs for articulation, I know that, but, you know, like, I don't know, they, it didn't hold together very well, but at least had more articulation. So, just like in the show, the, the Red Dragon Zord remains a separate piece when the White Tiger Zord is doing the combination. And, to amend the previous judgment, if you make sure all of the joints from the, leg and, the legs and tail are pushed all the way in, then they are much more stable. So he is not so floppy when he stands. So... Even though this completely robs all articulation below the waist, leaving him with only really good arms, which is still better than most Sentai, Sentai mechs, let's give it credit where it's due, um, that doesn't change the weak ankle thing. So, like, if you accidentally bump it the wrong way, you could finally, you know, that could happen. Because mm. those ankles are ratcheted, but the, the ratchets don't hold very strongly. So, I will take back what I said earlier about the Red Dragon being a bit floppy. So, um, he stands, though his ankles are still weak, and that can be real pain. I mean, I had all... When, when I was doing that whole little attack mode thing, I had already figured out the whole compress the legs to make them stiff thing. He just kept falling over because those ankles kept collapsing. As for big guy here, it's kind of scary and uncomfortable to build him. Cause you gotta like unpeg things from the from the other toys, which feels really uncomfortable. Like they don't want to come out. I actually do feel like I'm breaking this thing when I'm doing this, and that's not good. I don't like to do that to a toy that costs two hundred dollars, and another toy that also costs almost two hundred dollars. Like there's two really expensive toys here that the only way to combine them is to manhandle parts. I mean, I guess they tried by making sure those pegs were rounded so that they would slip in and out a little bit easier, but it still feels pretty scary when you're doing that. Um, so I'm like, you've just been staring at this thing's front this whole time, so like, here's the back. The front of the other Megazord is the back of this Megazord. Um, and I guess, like, eh. I mean, it's just kind of weird when you think, like, these are his hips. So, like, he has this tiny little torso and all this leg. But, you know, weird proportions, giant combo robots, that's always a thing that might happen. I mean, it even happens in Transformers Combiner Wars. Um, I guess still having elbows is kind of nifty. Can you put the, the sword in this thing's hand? Looks too small. Yeah, yeah it's too small. Well, because it's smaller, you can get it to grip the sword hilt a little bit tighter than the proper Megazord that's supposed to hold it. Uh, I don't know, I guess... I guess there's just some people who are actually, like, going nuts over how, how, how cool this looks, just like the show. But, I'm hardly impressed. Maybe I'm the wrong audience for it, but... The, the sh like, like this, this is, this is... That's supposed to be sold. Look at that. Look at that. So floppy. I do not like floppy connection points. I like my points to be hard and solid. And I can pick up the toy and shake it around. Well, nothing falls off this version. But the other one, like, when you shake it on, like, like you brush something and you cover its eyes. You, you... Ah, uh, you just missed my double face palm, like, uh. Okay. Let's get him back to his proper mode and, uh, give my final thoughts. So, final thoughts. It's a very cool-looking, um, Sentai mech. Uh, it's the Thunder Zord. Anyone who's a fan of that part of the series knows it. Um, it is big. It's bigger than the previous, than the original Megazord. Um, here it is next to the White Tiger in its own robot mode. Um, and look, I made use of that wrist joint so you can see how cool he looks when he can actually rotate that spear around. So he actually does have just enough articulation 
to have a nice dynamic stance and um, you know like a dynamic like you know when you get it set up in a nice dynamic looking pose like this and just leave it alone then it actually is a pretty cool looking toy but that's all I can say it's cool looking like like as soon as you start to pick it up and mess around with it everything starts to fall apart like the incredibly weak way that the arms peg in like the the way the legs are are literally just just a facade like like from behind you can see like like you know it's very very empty looking in the back like I know a lot of backpack kibble is often the bane of giant robots but something to fill in this space and make it look less like a giant robot is just wearing a chest plate would have made would have gone a lot longer so yeah he's and even even and I assure you that I had I made sure all those legs all those segments for the dragon's neck and tail were pushed in all the way and even so it's still kind of wobbly and doesn't want to stand right so it's unfortunate but I don't know it, it, I can give it the points for looking cool I can give it the points for having a really nice paint job um, it for um, nice use of die cast for uh, screen accuracy I can give it all those points but I cannot I cannot abide by just how fragile and floppy and poorly pegged together it feels for a $200 collector's item that's too much to look past um so yeah uh I wish Eli was here so he could punch me in the face, fix whatever was wrong with it with his superior knowledge of how Sentai mechs go together, and then um, and then tell you how awesome it is. But I gotta say, I've been screwing around with it for about an hour or so, and and uh, that's all I can say about it. <laughs> I just I like you know like six out of ten, you can do better. So this has been Wake Angel 2001. Um, 3333 Link regrets not being able to be here. Um, or Elias for short, whatever you want to call him. I call him Eli because he's my bro. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> this, um, I guess uh, nothing to do now but end the video. Hey out there, it's Wake Angel 2001, and this is totally not my gay lover. <laughs> I'm Elias for short. Shh, man. Sorry, I was just messing around. Another blooper. Oh. <laughs> okay.